uh, was just a stranger to them. He drove the people to the service and sat in the bus during the service. Now get this. He thought about 9 o'clock folks would be out of church. He had never heard me preach. So he, uh, uh, at 9 o'clock he looked at his watch and wondered where they were. He was sitting in the bus waiting for them to come out. Ten minutes past nine, he got worried. Whoever stays at church past ten, past ten, past, ten, past nine, at nine fifteen, he got very concerned and decided to maybe come and look and see what was going on. At nine twenty-five, he came and looked in the building. As I was giving the invitation, I was saying, God wants you! And just as my finger pointed, the door back in the back opened. And the bus driver looked in. There I was pointing to him. To him. He didn't even break stride. He just kept on coming down the center aisle. I do not let folks come in while I'm preaching. And brother, now on, don't ever come in down the front row while I'm preaching. This is too important an hour. My soul, my soul, help us. And ushers, you help me. Now listen to me. He came down the aisle. He looked at me and he says, What does God want me for? And I said, God wants you to be saved. And that bus driver, by... Now look, get this now. Suppose he had come and looked at the door at ten after nine. No, that wasn't God's time. I think he said, I'm going to go at ten after nine. The Lord said to an angel... Keep him in that seat 15 more minutes. And the angel said, I don't, don't, don't know how long I can keep him here. God says, I send another angel. Keep him there. At 9.20, he came. At 9.25, and just suppose I'd pointed my finger a little before that. Or after that. But the very minute I said, God wants you, the door opened at the split second. And by divine appointment, he received Jesus. I recall <clears throat> a, a fellow down in Texas, Dr. Rice, tells the story. How the fellow came to church, and every time he'd come, he said, The preacher preaches to me. And so he finally said to his wife, I'm not going to go again. Every time I go, he singles me out. Why, she says he doesn't. The preacher wouldn't do that. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Why, he wouldn't. Yes, he does. He just singles me out every time I go. Well, no, he wouldn't do that. Yes, he does. She said, okay, why don't you just go and sit outside and listen? And so there he came. Okay, I'll do it. So he won't single me out. So he sat just outside the door. Nobody knew he was there. He sat just outside the door. And the preacher got up this morning, morning and said, the devil's after you. Why? He said, you want him more than go out the door of this church so you'll meet the devil when you first walk out the door. The preacher said, see there? See there? It was for me. Yes, it is for you. And God knows you're there today. And God, God, God brought you by appointment. I recall I was down in Decatur, Georgia, preaching. They, uh, <clears throat> the church at that time did not have enough parking. Thank God we have enough. Uh, well, you can find plenty of parking within ten miles of our church any Sunday morning or Sunday night. But uh, didn't have enough parking. So they had a shuttle bus system. You'd drive to a certain parking area, and the church would provide shuttle buses and bring the folks to the services. So um, that morning, not that evening rather, uh, a policeman was out guarding the, the uh, cars. About the time he thought it was ready for the service to end, this policeman came in and sat down in the back row. He came in during the invitation and raised his hand for prayer. He walked in when I said, if you don't know you're saved, if you don't know if you died today, you'd go to heaven. If you don't know you're born again, raise your hand. He walked in, sat down just about the time I said that, and he raised his hand for prayer. That policeman got saved that night. Down in Jacksonville, Florida, one, one afternoon, I taught the soul winning course, how to, be a soul, how to win a soul to Christ. I taught that course. And uh, the, a fellow, a preacher was going to go get his wife and bring her back. He lived 40 miles away. He was going to go get his wife and bring her back to the services that night and hear me preach. He had just taught, learned how to be a soul winner. He never had won a soul, uh, as far as I know, and he, wanted to, he, he had learned how to be a soul winner. He was driving down the highway, 
And a fellow was hitchhiking. He said, boy, this is my chance. I'll hitchhike, I'll pick this hitchhiker up, get him saved, and use the method I just learned to win him to Christ. He picked, he got stopped, hitchhiker got in. He's just about to open his mouth and say, do you know if you died, you'd go to heaven? And the hitchhiker pulled a gun on him. Stuck it in his ribs. And he said, I'm going to kill you and take the car and what you've got. And this fellow who'd just taken my soul winning course said, okay. But he said, I just took a course on how to win a soul to Christ. And he said, I don't know any other way I'd rather die than telling somebody how to be saved. Now he said, if you want to kill me, you go ahead. But I'm going to start anyway telling you how to go to heaven when you die. And with that weapon pointed at this soul winner, he told him how to be saved. He went with him to get, he got saved, went with him to get his wife, came back to church that night, stood up in the pulpit, publicly professed his faith in Christ, and shook hands and embraced the man he was going to kill just a few hours before. I am simply saying, God makes appointments where people who do not know they're saved can hear the message of Christ. You came here this morning on purpose. God brought you here. Oh, you say, no, a bus worker visited me. Who do you think sent that bus worker by your house? And why do you think they chose your neighborhood? And why do you think that they chose your house in that neighborhood? And why do you think they chose your apartment in that house? I'll tell you why. God wants you to be saved today. There's a fifth thing I want you to notice. And that is, he didn't want to get, he didn't want to bear the cross. He didn't want to bear the cross. When they said bear the cross, he didn't want to. The Bible says he was compelled about like this. Uh, Take up the cross, please. Uh, Take up the cross. 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 And that's the, thank you. And that's the way it was. He was compelled to do it. You say, I don't want to be saved. Well, get saved anyhow. Well, you sit with the house. I'm having too much fun. You're going to die and go to hell, and you won't have much fun there. Now, you listen to me. People say, well, those First Baptist people always trying to high-pressure folks. You better know it. There's not one Fuller Brush salesman or Avon lady. Avon is calling. Or, or what's the other stuff? I just said Fuller Brush. If you'd listen, you'd know what I said. <laughs> Fuller Brush, Avon lady, Kirby, insurance salesman. There is not one, not one who's going to work harder to get his merchandise soul than I am to get people on their way to hell to receive Jesus and go to heaven forever. Oh, you listen to me. I beg you come to God today. I beg you come to God today. I plead with you. The Bible says we're to go to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. There's a sixth thing I want you to notice about this, and that is this. Listen carefully. He had no more chances after this. If he had not borne that cross that day, he would have never borne that cross. This was it. This was it. He was born for this hour. It's now or never. It's yes today or no forever. By divine appointment, God had taken him from 800 miles away in a little country called now called Tripoli, then called Cyrene. And then God had led that man step by step, schedule by schedule, on God's timetable until he came to a certain road at a certain place on that road, to a certain crowd at that place, to a certain man in that crowd, to a certain spot where that man bent beneath the load, to a certain cross on that spot, 
All of his life was made for that one time when he came in contact that split second with divine opportunity to bear the cross of Jesus. Hey, you may never have another chance like this to be saved either. Do you know what I believe? I believe the average person doesn't have that many chances to get saved. I believe that with all my heart. I know this this morning. I know that if you're tucked away in the balcony somewhere, a child or a teenager, an adult, tucked away in the, up here in this side or back here somewhere or back here somewhere, I know this. 